All right, gang, we're back. We're going to look at chapter 17.1 today. This is pages 536 to 541 in your textbook. Boy, we're really cruising right now, huh? All right, so chapter 17.1, the Emancipation Proclamation. So what we know already, a little bit of review in chapter 16.3, we learned about the key battles in both the North and the South that had significant impacts on the outcome of the Civil War. Don't worry, we have more of those coming up. What we're going to learn today, the Emancipation Proclamation, first thing about it, it freed slaves in the Confederate States, causing many slaves to escape to the Union. And it led to many African Americans joining the Union Army during the Civil War. So in parts of the South, slavery began collapsing as the Union Army swept through Confederate territory. Thousands of enslaved people escaped from those big plantations. Abolitionists began pressuring Lincoln to act as the war provided an opportunity to destroy slavery forever. But Lincoln was a little bit fearful that he did not have the constitutional power to abolish slavery. He doesn't think he has the a power uh, based on the Constitution to end slavery once and all by like an executive order. So Lincoln's priority at this point is to preserve the Union. So all those seceding states know he wants them back in the fold. He wants them to be part of the United States again. He wants to keep it together. No sectionalism is going to split this country up if he has anything to say about it. So Lincoln was quoted as saying, if I could save it by freeing all slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leave others alone, I would also do that. So Lincoln is exploring all these options for keeping the Union together. So Lincoln did not want to anger the border states. Remember, we have Missouri, Kentucky, Maryland, and Delaware as slave states that did not secede. He does not want to upset them by abolishing slavery there when many people depend on it for their livelihood or their jobs or their income. So what's he going to do? So by the summer of 1862, Abraham Lincoln decides in favor of emancipation. He decides that's that's the correct path that we should be on right now at this point in the war. So a little bit of review of vocabulary. Emancipate means to set free from legal, social, or political restrictions. And the Emancipation Proclamation is a document issued by Abraham Lincoln that declared that all slaves in Confederate-held territory were free. So on September 22nd, 1862, that's just five days after the victory at Antietam. We talked about Antietam last week. It's also called Sharpsburg because it was in Sharpsburg, Maryland, or near Sharpsburg, Maryland. Abraham Lincoln issued the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation. That means it's the early version of it. So he presented the proclamation as a wartime necessity under his authority as Commander-in-Chief. Remember, Commander-in-Chief of all the military in the United States. He ordered that on January 1st, 1863... All enslaved individuals in areas still in rebellion against the United States, that would be the Confederacy, they're the, the states or areas that are in rebellion, all enslaved individuals henceforth shall be free, forever free, and under the protection of the military. So African Americans waiting to enlist to be received into the armed forces, and the war preserved the Union. And it, the war to preserve the Union also, at this point, becomes a war to end slavery. So Lincoln converts this war to preserve the union to a higher like moral cause pretty smart move on his part so what's happening at this time as president lincoln decides in favor of emancipation proclamation well we have the battle at antietam in sharpsburg maryland so the battle was named by the union after a nearby creek called the antietam and around 3500 soldiers were killed and over 17,000 were wounded so this is the bloodiest single day in American history. So like other battles had more casualties like Chickamauga, Gettysburg, those places had larger casualties or larger numbers of casualties, but they were fought over two or three or more days. So this one right here is one day, 23,000 plus casualties, just a bloodbath at Antietam. So this is known as a turning point in the Civil War, as it was when President Lincoln announced the Emancipation Proclamation. we got two quick Discovery Ed videos I want you to take a look at. So this is what happened at Antietam. We have the Battle of Burnside's Bridge. So this is Burnside's Bridge. You can still go there today if we're not under quarantine. By the way, this is Ambrose Burnside. He is the guy who became commander of the armies in the East after Lincoln fired... Uh, McClellan after Antietam, but he is at this uh, battle 
as a underling to McClellan, and this is a bridge that's named after him. He and a bunch of guys tried to cross that bridge for hours. Just kept getting shot to pieces on this bridge. There's a video here I would like you to watch. All right. So it was not only the bloodiest day of the Civil War, but it was the bloodiest day in American history. I told you guys that in the previous slide. Sorry, I'm a little out of order. So let's see. It also ended Robert E. Lee's first invasion of a northern states. The battle was pretty much a tie, but when it was done, Lee retreated back to Virginia. So that's why the, uh, the Union claims it as a victory. So here is the North claim victory because Lee retreated from Maryland and back into Virginia. Lincoln was upset with Union General McClellan for not pursuing the troops. He thought if, he, if uh, Lee had retreated, McClellan followed him on the retreat and attacked with his cavalry or something like that. They thought it could have ended the war right there and said we have almost three more years of war ahead of us. So Great Britain and France continued to not recognize the Confederacy. So here's the Emancipation Proclamation. So the five W's of the Emancipation Proclamation. Who wrote it? Well, it was written by Abraham Lincoln with advice, uh, advisement from his cabinet. What was it? The Emancipation Proclamation is the document that called for the freeing of slaves in rebellious states during the Civil War. Where did it apply? This is important to know this. All slaves in rebellious states were freed. So that does not mean the Confederate or the border states. So only states that are in open rebellion. If you stayed with the United States in 1861, this did not affect you. A preliminary version of the Emancipation Proclamation was circulated in 1862. The document was officially issued on January 1st, 1863. So why was it written? Well, the document was written for several reasons. It was aimed to weaken the Confederacy by eliminating its economic abilities. Now, if they lose slaves, they're not going to be able to tend to those fields of these big plantations. So it's going to cripple them economically. It also turned the war into a crusade against the institution of slavery. It made it a moral, moral fight. So let's see, the first reading of the Emancipation Proclamation of President Lincoln. Lincoln viewed the Emancipation Proclamation as his proudest achievement and welcome opportunities to have his accomplishments celebrated. So when Francis Bicknell Carpenter requested permission to create a painting of the president presenting the proclamation to his cabinet, Lincoln invited the artist to live in the White House until he completed his work. The original painting now hangs in the U.S. Capitol. So that's the painting he came up with. Pretty good, better than anything I could do. So let's look at the Emancipation Proclamation. We have this quote, all persons held as slaves within any state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then henceforth and forever free. So that is that language that is used in the mid-1800s. It's a little bit clunky for us in 2020, but this is what it means. Uh, proclaiming that slaves that exist in rebellious parts of the nation shall, so that would be the Confederacy, from this day, January 1st, 1863, be considered free peoples. Here's another quote. And as a fit and necessary war measure for suppressing said rebellion, do on this first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, this quote signifies that Lincoln is also issuing the proclamation as a war measure, and therefore we can consider it a war tactic. So I'm going to let you go over that last one. We got to get through these slides quickly because we're running out of time here. Lincoln believed that the Constitution did not give him permission to free all slaves, but because freeing the slaves in the South weakened the Confederacy economically, the uh, the Emancipation Proclamation could be seen as a military action. It was a, a war tactic, you could say. So, as Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Lincoln enforced this Emancipation Proclamation as a military authority. Take a look at that link right there. So here's the response. I'm sure you can guess what the South thought about. The South, Southerners were angered, and many slaves began escaping to Union lines. In the North, abolitionists were thrilled. Northern Democrats, remember, they didn't vote for Lincoln. They, Lincoln was a Republican. They opposed the proclamation because they felt it would prolong or lengthen the war. And Union soldiers supported the proclamation, saying they were happy for anything to destroy everything or, that gives the rebels strength. We'll learn a little bit about the 54th Massachusetts Regiment right here. So after this, we have the first African-American regiment organized in the North. Two of Frederick Douglass's sons served in the 54th Massachusetts Regiment. July 1863, so we're now close to a year after Antietam, the 54th led a heroic attack on Fort Wagner in South Carolina. Soldiers in African-American regiments faced many dangers if they were captured. The Confederate government threatened them with execution and returning them to slavery instead of prison war camps. There's a quick video I want you to take a look at right here. And then on the in uh, 
Google Classroom. I'm going to share a link to a Google form to show what you know. All right, that's all for today. Enjoy yourselves. Have a good day.